to Ski with me, your host, John Morgan. Today, we're in Switzerland, high in the upper Engadine, on the Italian border. That's right, we're in San Moritz. Grab your skis, and let's dive into the world of skiing in San Moritz. San Moritz is known for five-star hotels, Michelin-starred restaurants, designer boutiques, and some high-class apres ski. But it also has some of Europe's most amazing skiing, home to Winter Olympics, multiple Alpine Ski World Championships, there's some real skiing here in San Moritz. Past the skiing, there's bobsledding on the legendary Cresta Run, ice hockey, ice polo, ice plunges, and even ice cricket on the lake. There's always something going on in San Moritz. San Moritz is located in southeast Switzerland, straight south of Zurich, only three hours by train from Zurich and from Milan. This place has been a winter sports destination since 1866. There are two parts of town. Main town itself, San Moritz, and San Moritz Bad is down by the lake. Of the 10 ski areas in the valley, we'll focus on the main three areas, Corviglia, Carvach, and Via Vazella, all of which are recognized for the excellence of their lifts, both on and off piece skiing. Corviglia, with its 163 runs for all ability levels, is the closest and biggest area. It's accessible by the signal tram, a train, and other ski lifts directly from town. Corvach, but slightly smaller with 120 runs, it's a bit to the south and has more advanced terrain. Via Beleza has 45 intermediate and expert runs and it's farthest away, oh, about 15 minutes, down near the Italian border. My guests today live, work, and ski in San Moritz. Christoph Steck is a skier, mountaineer, and a climber, but also an experienced chef, wine and food amateur, and a successful entrepreneur. In 2010, he co-founded Passion Ski to bring his passion for the region to guests from all over the world. Marco Valls developed a deep love for skiing and surfing and has guided for over 10 years in the Engadin region. Studied and now teaches health and wellness. But let's talk to Christoph and Marco to find out more. Christoph, Marco, welcome to Where to Ski. And thanks for joining us today. Entering Semaritz, you can just tell it's a very special place, different from other ski towns. What's it like living and working in perhaps the best known resort on the planet? Yeah, I would say it, it feels good to be in a such good place because we have everything around, you know, we have the perfect nature. On the other side, we have like a city in the, in the peak season where the whole world is here around and looking to do great stuff and and we can just do that with them we can show them everything and it's it, it's a very nice feeling to to be able to do all these kind of things on the other side i really appreciate also when when the people go get away again and we can enjoy the nature for us for ourselves and and this contrast is actually amazing so it's a very much of a contrast when it's busy, it's busy, but then you get the town and the mountains to yourself during the off seasons. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of the uh, contrast, it's really like you can find all the luxury uh, you want. Uh, everything, what uh, your heart desires, you can uh, get here uh, or somebody will organize it. And the other hand, uh, we have the rough nature. And which is also like uh, very beautiful. It was uh, also a bit uh, demanding sometimes, but uh, it's exactly this uh, contrast. I believe we we like uh, up here so much. We have uh, the clean air, we have the clean uh, water, and uh, quite a, a good lifestyle. And, uh, yeah, it's it's brilliant. That sounds awesome. We'll get back to town shortly and we'll get into a little more detail about what town's like. But let's talk about the skiing. Each of the ski areas there are very different in character. So perhaps we talk about it separately, unless you want to bring them together. But I was thinking, let's start with Corviglia and what it's like skiing there. It really sort of towers right over the town. You can get the tram or the uh, train to go right out of town to go skiing. And there's some really wide open, it's high. So there's wide open areas for skiing. And it's really skiing for everybody. There's expert, there's a lot of intermediate and beginner. So there's a lot to talk about here. There is a lot of talk uh, about. The thing is, can you give you a story? You wake up in the morning, then uh, you have a nice coffee and you just walk over to the station. You go up with the first train, 745. 
and then uh, the sun is not even uh, has not even rise. So um, you go to the peak of the mountain, and then you have the sunrise, and then the uh, it's like everything. The, the snow is red, and uh, the the air is cold and crystal clear, and you have like a, a perfect white carpet snow. It's it's just unbelievable uh, how good it is on on the slopes uh, early mornings. Nobody's up there. Uh, you can enjoy yourself. You uh, to get some time for yourself to have fun and uh, yeah, just enjoy your holiday or whatever reason uh, you you came here. It's absolutely uh, brilliant. And then uh, for lunch, we have some really nice restaurants where you can go for uh, <laughs> for a lunch and then maybe to up the ski or yeah, do some other stuff. And uh, that's great. Uh, we have like really good for uh, slopes for beginners and for intermediates and uh, but also for uh, for professionals it's a it's a ton of fun to to slam down these slopes does the mountain ski with the sun so you ski certain parts in certain parts of the day so that you can stay in the sun we have this different kind of ski resort and corvilla for example is really on the sunny side of the mountains so it's really like the let's say the pleasure mountains. Uh, you always have the sun from morning until until the afternoon. The slopes are maybe a bit easier. They're very, very large, very perfect prepared. We find at Corvilla more better restaurant than in the other ski resort. So it's really about the pleasure. Corvilla offers what all the people are looking for during the holiday. They like comfort, they like pleasure, they like fun. And this, I would say, this is really the Corvilla, the sunny side of the skiing. And on the other side, you have the other ski resort who offers also a lot of nice things, but it's really different. And I would say this is actually, uh, it's really nice because we can offer to our guests different side of skiing you know do you like to have a comfortable day then we're going more to Korea. you like a bit more challenging we maybe move to Korach and you like a bit more wild skiing then we will move to Diavoletza and I would say this is makes our job a bit easier because we really have the perfect structure around us to, to help our customer to feel well so you really temper the skiing in Samaritz more around the uh, the expectations of the skier. So the experts you take over to Carvage to start with, but the intermediates, the beginners, the people who want to just have a good day will stay pretty much in Corvigia. Yeah, Where's we can say the... this way. You you find also you know you you, you will. You will find a good time also for an intermediate skier at Corvage, and you also will find some good things to do at Corvilla with an expert skier. We know, you know, as as a like like off-piste guide, we really know also some nice off-piste to do at Corvilla, which make it challenging for everybody, even for ourselves. But you you say it the right way. We can resume in, in this way. Like Corvilla offer really this pleasure and Corvatch a bit more challenge and Diavoletza La Galp, I would say, to resume its wildness and nature. On Corviglia, what's the best place on the mountain to have lunch? There, I know there's a lot of places, but what's your favorite? I think here we could fight. <laughs> <laughs> there's many good restaurants and also some very special, special restaurant. I would say uh, the last one or just open again last year it's paradiso it's uh, badrut's palace the most famous hotel over the world i guess they are in charge of this restaurant then they make a very let's say a very special service so everything is perfect around they offer also like um, a club so you can just go there if you're part of the club and you pay a special fee to get in uh, let's say it's very it's not for everybody, but it's really, the place is amazing and they really try to make everything very special. They organize different events, even in the evening, because you can you can reach the place even in the evening with a chairlift and with some special snow machine. Let's say Paradiso is definitely 
the special place in, in, in the ski resort of Corvillia. If it's the best, I guess we could fight. <laughs> Marco, what do, what do you think? Best place to like grab a coffee or a lunch on? I think I have a, like a, a little secret uh, spot for you. It's called uh, Clava Dutch. It's a little alpine uh, hut. It's uh, very cozy. They have like a fireplace inside. You can have fondue and all the, the good uh, Swiss food. And it's a bit hidden in the, um, in the forest. And uh, I believe it's like really nice because it's usually it's not that it's not crowded and the people are friendly and um, yeah, you have to get uh, off the slope and find it uh, a little bit. That's a challenge. It's a challenge That's a bit there. of a challenge. Yeah. You guys were talking about Corvage and so sort of to let everyone know Corvage is about 10 minutes from the center of town. Probably I, the best way to get there is by a bus. Yeah, like more or less 10 minutes, yeah, yeah, 10, 10 to, 15, to 15 minutes. And the best way to get there from town is by bus or is there a train? How does that work? Yes, uh, we have a very good uh, public uh, transportation uh, system in Switzerland uh, in general. So it's uh, very safe and uh, all the people, uh, they use it. The advantage is if you take the bus, uh, you can ski in Corbach and then you can ski all the way back down to, to St. Moritz again. So uh, otherwise, uh, if you go by car, the, the car will be stuck in, in Soleil. So you can really experience a fantastic slope all the way down the Han and say, I believe it's one of the most beautiful uh, slopes uh, in the world. You can stop uh, at the Han and say restaurant, have a, a, a homemade a blueberry cake with a, with a nice cappuccino uh, for, for a break. That's, that's really nice. Marco, I'm skiing with you. <laughs> but you know what? I have a, I have a little secret also for you. <laughs> and the secret is, you know, it may be cost a little bit more, but you we made that a couple of times with our guests. It's also fantastic. We start early in the morning, as Marco said before, with the sunrise at Corvilla and look, enjoy the white perfect in the morning. And really, you're going to be just by yourself because most of the people, they don't want to get up that early. And then one hour later, a helicopter will pick up on the slope of Corvillia. We jump in the helicopter. We make an amazing sighting flight over the, the highest peak, like Pitts Bernina, which is more than 4,000 meters, um, 4, 4, meters high. And we make a nice flight and then we land at Kovac, we spend the day there, and then at the end, we come back with the ski back to St. Moritz. And this is just an experience you have to do, you have to do it once in your life. It's just amazing. That sounds pretty cool. I, wow. Wow. That's uh, <laughs> quite a day. Now, Corvach, just I want to sort of focus on this for a minute. Corvac is faces north so it's a little bit darker it's um, a little bit cooler than colder than uh, than Corviglia correct yes that's right it's the, the exposition is on the north face of the mountain so of course a bit less sun special December January it's quite cold and not very sunny but it brings a, a, a big advantage at the end of the season let's say March April you can ski until the end of the season with great snow until the end because the sun is not so strong on the north face and in march april you are you have the sun but this this the snow stays good and this is really amazing so we are very lucky to have both to have a sunny side and to have a a north face mountains to be able to ski until the end and Normally in April, we always get a lot of snow. When everybody is thinking the, the winter is over, forget about it, because then it even starts. And we get snow and snow and snow. And I can tell you, I made super, really the best skiing days in end of April, which is really amazing. So we're very happy about Corvac to offer the possibility because Corvillia, let's say Corvillia, end of March, it's getting tricky, the snow is getting heavy and slashy, it's not so fun anymore, and then it's the time to go over on the other side. Yeah, and the same works for early season. I remember training um, in Corvach in 
October, November, probably November at one point yeah. years ago. And yeah, yeah, up in the glacier, place. there's plenty of snow. Now there's a third area that's about, that's up closer to the Italian border. Tell me about that one. That, I'm going to screw up the name here. It's Diavol, Diavoleza. Yes, Diavoleza. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. It's actually uh, quite a long gondola, a very long slope, and there's just one chairlift up there. And the view is just gorgeous. It's uh, absolutely stunning. Uh, you're in the middle of the Alps. You see all the, the glaciers and the mountains of uh, Piz Palu and Piz Bernina and Piz Morterac, and it's amazing for, for ski touring. Uh, you can cross the whole glacier and then uh, ski down all the way uh, to, to Morterac. Uh, the food is good. Um, yeah, it's a really nice uh, experience uh, up there. Um, every month they do a full moon, um, how do you say, full moon skiing. So it's, it's only skiing with the moon. Uh, there is no uh, additional light, no nothing. So, so you just see the moon and the stars and uh, you ski down uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, you have a fun day up there and have a good time with your uh, family and friends and uh, whoever you go to ski with. That's, uh, that's uh, absolutely br uh, brilliant up there. That sounds tricky. Skiing at night is always a challenge for me, at least. Yeah, especially uh, with the with the with the, the light of the moon is very different than if you just get normal light. To, it, it, it's so different, and and it, but it feels very good, and it's something very special. This is an experience. Also, you, you have to do it, and and most of the place I know where they organize full moon skiing or night skiing. It's 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 a small slope or you know not something very exciting, but Diavoletsa they offer it really on the main slope. So really you go on around three thousand meters and you ski down until two thousand meters. So you make thousand meters down, and it's really a big slope and 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 this to do that in the middle of the night is is just amazing. I, I would say it is there is no place. I wouldn't know another place in the in the Alps where they offer uh, such an experience on this kind of slope. So this, I would say, it's it's, it's just incredible. Sometimes I don't know uh, if I'm dreaming or if I'm awake. So it's like yeah. really like in La La Land. <laughs> it's really, it's really good. So you talked a little bit about um, backcountry or off-piste skiing. How is the um, off-piste around Samaritz? I would say we are lucky because St. Moritz is not so famous for for free riding, for ski touring. And I would say um, a big part of the customer who are coming to St. Moritz, they like, they like the pleasure part. As we talked before, Crovilla enjoying comfort table, nice restaurant and so on. So then it's good for us because it gave us a lot of space to go off piece with our guests. If you compare, for example, to Verbier, to Chamonix, whatever, you know, there are those places are really hot spot for that. And if if you have a day with fresh snow, you you have two hours or maybe three time to go. And after everything is done. In summary, so let's say that the, I, I, I am talking about the old valley. Um, you have you have always the time you always find something even after two weeks without snowing you will find a place where there is good snow where there's not too much track where you can make your guests happy and i would say this is really really great for us because our ski school we are specialized a bit on on on, on free riding offering ski touring we have three mountain guide working with us and then we have people like me and marco where we we are a specialized free ride guide. So it's, it's, it's really great. It's a great place. And we find every level. We find something very difficult, very steep, maybe something where we need to go on the glacier, where we need to use the, the crampons and we need to use the rope. And of course, in this case, that's the terrain for our mountain guides. But we always find some easy ski tour, not too steep, and, and, and where we can where you get the chance to learn to learn it as well. So this is really fantastic. You guys do a lot of training uh, before you take guests up, before you're allowed to take guests up. 
including avalanche mitigation, things like that, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, do you, uh, Marco just did uh, the refresh. Uh, um, Backcountry course. Backcountry course. You know, we have to do every year. We have to make a course to make sure we are up to date and we remember everything. And uh, and they check it. And we need to do that to be able to, to keep our license on to, to go off this. And next to that, uh, Passion Ski is always always organizing intern for our school, like uh, also some training during the season. We are lucky. We have three mountain guide in our team, and they can really. They can really make sure that everybody is uh, is ready for it because as you say this is a big uh, is a big story like safety we cannot only talk about fun uh, safety is a big topic and we take it seriously maybe sometimes we sound like funny guys and having fun but <laughs> in, in in at this moment <laughs> we are we are able to be very serious and, and and to take our responsibility and to make sure that our guests have a good time, but also come back home safely. And I would say this is very important. And is this is one of the big reasons why people pay for a guide, because they want to make sure they come home in the evening. Well, and, and that's true. I think anyone that goes off piece anywhere in the Alps needs to have a guide with them. That's just no question. Someone who really, really knows the mountain, someone who really knows what to look for and knows what the snow conditions are. It's really, it's critical. So when it really, really snows hard in Samaritz, what where can you ski? A lot of the mountain is up above tree lines. So what's the skiing like on a on a snowy day? Do they shut it down and do, or do they leave it open and let you fend for yourself and go from side to side? If it's really dumping, we can get like uh, two meters in like two days, and then the whole valley is locked. Uh, so you can't leave or enter the valley. The, the roads are closed. The trains uh, the trains are closed. Uh, so you cannot leave uh, the valley. Also, the ski area is closed, and it's also quite dangerous uh, to go skiing. Uh, that can happen like um, usually once once a year. Um, then it's of course not much uh, with uh, with skiing, but then we still can go for a really beautiful uh, snowshoe hiking tour in the forests. But uh, yeah, when we get like one meter or something, it's it's great um, to 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 ski. And here we have the possibilities to to go up uh, to to the big mountains, but also we have some uh, some lower ski areas uh, which are uh, covered in the in the in the forest. That forest helps it gives us some depth perception. You can see what you're doing, where you're going into. So the trees help a lot. Yeah, exactly. We have a, a nice also a little secret spot. Uh, it's called Maloya. It's at the end of the valley before going down to Italy. And there's only a, just a T-bar lift. That's it. Not very spectacular, but it's amazing because it's all in the forest. And when you have those days which is snowing, 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 and you don't have the sun, you don't have the visibility, you will find every free rider there and going up and down and up and down, I don't know, 50 times a day. But you can ski quite steep in the forest. It's it's like let's say a playground for for adults. And yeah, this is really also something amazing. We still have that even if if the Engadine Valley is actually more like like alpine, like the big mountains, very high. But we all also have this little playground in case uh, yeah the condition doesn't give us the possibility to go really high because it's too dangerous. So for skiing, what's the best month to go to San Marantz in your, in your view? I think you said something about March. We were talking about that with Marco before, and, uh, and I think this time we definitely agree. Uh, I would say March is, is a perfect month because the Engadine is in general quite cold. So let's say the last couple of years, things have changed a bit. Even here, we, we feel like a bit the climate changing and we feel like it's getting a bit less, less cold than it used to be. But in general, December, January, it's very, very, very cold and we are quite high here. And so it, it, maybe not everybody enjoy the cold. And in March, it's... It's just perfect. It's not too cold. It's not too warm. And also the snow 
it's most of the time better because we also, I don't know if it has to do with the climate change. I'm not, I would I'm say I'm not a specialist in that, but the snow are, have the tendency to getting later and later. So in December, most of the time, it's happened that December, we don't have much snow, but the snow arrive more in January, February, March again, and, and even at the end of the season when everybody are thinks it's over, it's coming again. So okay. I think we go for March. Yeah, because it's, uh, as Felicia said, a bit warmer, and uh, the days are also a bit longer. It's a bit more enjoyable. There's really good days usually in, in, in March, uh, much better than in December because we need to have some base because it's quite high. It's, uh, it's a bit rocky that it uh, covers all the rocks. I remember there was like four years ago, by far the best free ride day we had on 2nd of May. <laughs> there was like super fluffy snow. It was like one meter of fresh powder snow nobody skiing anymore and we just had an awesome time up there it was cold like in february but wow i will probably never forget this day in may wow in may yeah so let's go to town for a minute it Semarans is a pretty special town it's a lot of boutique shops a lot of very fancy hotels and restaurants marco you were talking about the best place to get a cup of coffee before you go up early in the morning. Where's the, where do you go for your morning coffee before you go up uh, to the top? Yeah, that's at home. That's <laughs> <laughs> I always make my uh, bulletproof coffee with uh, butter and uh, coconut fat. Uh, that brings me uh, through the whole day. Uh, ski touring, free riding. Um, yeah. Are there places in town that our guests shouldn't miss that they um, that you guys would really recommend when they're not skiing? Yeah, when they're not skiing, I think uh, Hanselmann would be a nice place. Uh, it's a very traditional um, coffee place. Uh, it's owned by Swiss uh, people or like local families, let's say. Yeah, it's, it's hard to 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 make a choice. I think it's like we said before. There's so many things. During the season time, winter season especially, it's getting a bit like a city. So like in the city, you find a bit everything. You know, you will find like, let's say a cheap place for a coffee. You will find a, a very nice coffee, traditional, like just Marco said, um, Anzelman. Uh, you will find also a place where you can just have a burger. We have uh, some guys that offer even like like street food, like like with a like with a van, and and you can just get a burger there. So we really are lucky to to find everything. I mean, if you go, let's say to Brad Padrid's Palace, or I mean, you can go as a normal person. You don't need to be resident there. You can go into the palace and having an afternoon tea there. Of course, you, it will cost you maybe 50 francs, but you will have an experience in a location. It's like in a movie. Um, and on the other side, you can have it simple. And I would say that mm. that's, that's what's amazing. Uh, everything is around um, about food and drinks. Uh, this is this is just something um, I wouldn't say not every ski resort would offer this. There's a lot of variety in San Moritz. What's the best opera spot in San Moritz for the crowds? You know, there's probably a lot of clubs and things like that, but pretty much every ski town in Europe has got a really good spot for opera. Uh, Hauser's Rubar, it's, uh, it's the place uh, to be for, for opera ski. Uh, but I think we have to mention here, uh, it's it's not like we don't have an upper ski culture uh, like in like in other countries, like in, for, for example. Yeah, Austria if you go Kush, if you compare to Kuschevel or in Austria, it's really we don't have this. But of course, you'll find, as I say, this nice place and you you can have a drink and there's some live music. And it's great, but it's not so. Yeah, it's not really in our culture here. Uh, it, it's funny because some people get disappointed about the opera ski, but a lot of other people appreciate that it's not getting so crazy. 
Well, that's sort of, it's very Swiss, very Swiss. I've skied in Austria, the opera scene there is wild. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I haven't seen it as much in Switzerland. Have you guys ever been on the um, bobsled run, the Cresta run? Yes. Yes. This is also, you have to do it once in your life. I mean, it's so many things you have to do once in your lifetime, but this is definitely made, it's like, it's like the best world course you ever done. And it, it's on a natural, on a natural track, you know, made really with shovel and, and hands. Like it, it's amazing. It, they're, they're, it's like now three weeks, they're working every day to make it happen. And this is, I would say this is also unique. You can make it, you can book, run. It, it, it's not that expensive. I, I guess something like 250 francs. Of course, for for the maybe 30 seconds, <laughs> looks like a lot of money, but all the experience around is, is really amazing. And, and, and this is something we, we offer also to our guests, you know, to say, hey, come on, it's not only about skiing. You have to make that, you have to see that. And most of our guests, when they have done it once, they're just... Doing the Cresta run is on my list. I've never done a bobsled run, and that sounds really cool. There's a lot of other things that go on in Sam Ritz that you don't see other places, you know, between the ice polo and the horse racing on ice and cricket on ice. The lake there, people forget about that when you talk about the ski area, but the lake has a lot of events and a lot of things going on, everything from ice hockey to things I just talked about. Yeah, or digging a hole through the ice and uh, go swimming. Oh. I swimming, stay in for like five minutes. Very nice experience. Really? Okay. Yeah, by the way, he's a he's a he's a ice swimming instructor. Really? Off swim off instructor. I am yes as well. Uh, how to feel the comfort in the discomfort of the of the cold? It's a it's really amazing, beautiful uh, experience. It's wow. with a. Uh, mindset focus then uh, breathing and then you jump into the ice and you really want to go in and it's mind over body so um you stay in for two minutes you don't even shiver you control the body it's very good for the immune system to boost uh, to boost it tap into the autonomic uh, nervous system it's great Actually, I'm thinking through this, and it's probably not a lot different than jumping in the snow after a sauna. You work yourself into it, you get ready, and you go in two minutes, yeah. and yeah, it, it resets your whole body. Wow. Exactly. Just Sorry. to come back to the, to the snow, uh, all this, um, this event on the lake, on the frozen lake, uh, yeah, this, I, I think we have to, to say it again. It, it, it's amazing because it gives the possibility for families who maybe not everybody likes the skiing and it gives the possibility to see something else. And, and that's important. I would say that's also something, it's also the power of, of Samurit that it's not only skiing. It's you really a lot of things to do, a lot of things to discover without the skiing. And I think it's important because it's happened a lot. Maybe the wife, she likes the skiing, the man doesn't like the skiing, and so they can make their program and everybody's happy at the end of the day. And, and this is, uh, is great. Not, no, not every place is able to offer all, all those um, offers. That's very true. There's very few places that can keep an entire family happy, whether you've got grandparents or parents or something like that that don't ski. You don't want them just sitting there all day doing nothing and while you're skiing. So there's a lot for them to do. That's fabulous. That's pretty cool. It makes it a very rounded resort. So tell me, what's your favorite day when you don't have guests? What's your favorite day of skiing in San Moritz? Hmm. Let's start with Marco. I'm sure he has a little secret. <laughs> or I'm sure he has a little story to tell. Okay, Marco, no, get, no guests. Um, you get to do it on your own. Where do you go? There is a couple stories I can tell, but uh, I believe one of the best was uh, me and my brother. We went up to Yulir uh, Pass at 11 o'clock at night. We started walking. We reached a peak at uh, 1 o'clock uh, at night, 1 a.m., uh, under full moon and billions of stars. And we just skied down uh, a really nice couloir 
pretty yeah, steep driveway. Steep one, yeah, yeah it's steep. pretty pretty steep. A beautiful couloir, and uh, that was like a really beautiful experience. Then we came uh, home at like two o'clock uh, a.m. <laughs> and went straight for a beer. So that was that was awesome. Gustav, how about you? What's your favorite? I have to say, when when I'm really off and I don't have time for myself, I like to go on the ski tour. I like to go away from the ski resort. I like to go away from the people. I really like to be a bit by myself or let's say just with one or two good friends, discovering new places. And and, and you wouldn't believe me, I'm, I'm living here more than 20 years. And, and every year I, I find a new ski tour or, or just a, a hill that I never made. And, and, and I like this part, discovering a new place, go, Go away and enjoy that. And and since since one year, I'm I'm also doing paragliding. So I'm a paragliding pilot, and um, so I also like you know climbing up the the mountains with the skis. And then when you arrive, perfect place, good condition, take the paraglider, and then just taking off and make a beautiful flight. And and this is the kind of they are the kind of things which just make my a perfect that sounds pretty cool i'm not sure if i'm up for the 1 a.m climb marco but <laughs> i could go paragliding with you that sounds like fun that sounds like a ball. <laughs> you guys have made a business out of um turning your passion for the mountains into into a business and how would you you know what's your theory behind living in the mountains and transmitting what you've learned in the mountains to your guests well it's um it, it is very difficult to answer without starting to talk for an hour but i would i would come back a bit from what i said from the beginning we we are lucky to live in a place who offer all the kind of things that we really like and when you're able to to do something which is your passion, passion, what you really like, uh, this just makes everything perfect. You know, you forget about all the problem because of course, being here and having our passion ski company, we have the same challenges, challenges like everybody else. So we have also make sure we, we, we make enough money, we have to make sure we have enough gas, everything must working, we have to respect all the regulation. But by being in a place like that, where we have all the power of the mountain behind us, if I, I'm kind of feeling it makes everything a bit easier. Uh, and, and this is something I would say, I cannot explain it. Uh, I would say that the nature has a couple of things which are have a lot of power. I would say mountains, it's for sure one of these. Probably if you would speak to someone who was living by the sea, will say the sea and the big waves and the wind is, have a lot of powers. Um, yeah, we live with the power of the mountains and, and this is a big help uh, to make uh, the day happen and to make the day good and, and and to make our life good at the end that's i would say my personal goal i just want to be happy not more and not less a great response yeah and i think like in life everything has a uh, like two sides of a medal um of course it's it's beautiful up here it's uh, it's stunning we have great nature and on the other hand, uh, it's also sometimes, as Christoph said, a bit uh, challenging for especially local families uh, because their rents are getting really expensive. There is like uh, uh, not so much space um, to live and, and um, everybody knows everybody. So sometimes it makes it also a bit, uh, you know, on one side, it's nice to, to know everybody. And the other side is then uh, everybody knows you as well, right? So. <laughs> uh, tell me about, a little bit about Passion Ski and how our guests can get in touch with you and what you guys offer. We we are let's say um, a ski school, so we specialize we really about skiing. We offering everything what what we can do on the ski. So we ski on the slopes like just alpine skiing. 
We're offering free riding. We're offering telemark. By the way, Marco is an amazing telemark skier. Uh, we're offering cross-country skiing. We're offering snowshoes, walking or hiking. We have also um, a couple of guys in, in our team. They are quite good with the snowboard. So, of course, if someone asks for a snowboard, even if it's not passion snowboarding, we are here and we can do it and we can organize it. And then it's coming a bit the thing what we prefer to do, and it's the off-base skiing, ski touring, I would say that we try to get a bit specialized in that. Some other ski school, they get specialized in, in training uh, for racing. We will be honest uh, to you, Gop to you that we are not so good in, in, in racing. I think no one in our team is, has really the patience for that. And, and that's why we don't offer it because we, there is other ski school with they, they really, that's their business and they like it. And we are a bit different than everybody else. I find that our ski school is like a slow ski school. We are a bit different and, and we like to give this value to our guests, to our kids. It's not about to be the fastest, but it's really about to find a patient, make it with fun. And we believe that with this power, you're getting also very good. Is the best place for our guests to find you at uh, passionski.ch? have to keep in touch with me through emails, through phone call. But we have to say at this time of um, way, so passionski.ch, um, you'll find all the information. Um, maybe I just uh, add to that, that we are very good in, you know, we are, we are always available, you know, because we are small, because we're familiar, there's people that like something special and then we are able to organize it. What I would say is we offer um, customized personal experience. So uh, whatever uh, the people are here for and ask for, we try to uh, fulfill uh, their needs. And especially in skiing, we don't only offer like uh, skiing with two pieces of wood down a mountain. Uh, I always teach a philosophy, uh, how I interpret um, <clears throat> what a skier uh, might be. And uh, it's also about uh, personal uh, development. So you learn a lot uh, for life from skiing, so. Well, Christoph, Marco, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about skiing in Samaritz today. You might see Christoph um, out in the backcountry, getting away from the people or go hanging out on his uh, paraglider. You might see Marco taking his plunge into the lake. Uh, if you want to contact him, uh, Passion Ski is the right place to reach out at passionski.ch. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.